Star Trek had a lot of ships that made up the Federation of Planets and a lot of iterations of ships. And today I'm going to talk about the Ambassador class starship from concept to what we saw on screen to what the future could have been for that ship. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video, the first video of 2022. We are getting this started today and we're going to look at a Star Trek ship today that is one of the ships that bore the name Enterprise. Now, it only showed in one episode of TNG, but the ship had a history and by not making that history, created a war that devastated the Federation. And I am talking about the Ambassador class starship today, the Enterprise C. This is pretty much an iteration of what we saw on screen. But I want to talk about it in three modes. This is what we saw, this design. This was the final product. But I also want to go to what was the original concept for that ship. How it was very different from what we got. Very lower, lower warp nacelles, longer nacelles, a very different ga galaxy class nose to the ship and just a lot of the same ship is there but it's a different little bit of version and that's really cool about this one because this was a really sim simple print once i figured out how to print it and how to get it to print properly now guys one of the things too all these links to these models i don't think will be in this description with credit to their makers so definitely check those out but from concept to design to what could be the ship's future. And what I say mean by future is, where could that ship have gone if the future of Star Trek had come true? And specifically, I'm talking about the Star Trek episode, All Good Things, where we see the Galaxy Class Enterprise D all beefed up with bigger weapons and a third nacelle. Well, who's to say this ship wasn't still in service with that design? So we're going to talk about these models. We're going to see them get printed and we're going to see the final product today as we kind of just do a teaching time lapse. So basically three ships, one Kira session, some cool time lapses, and then we'll see the final products at the end. Now, unfortunately, I don't have them fully painted. You can tell I started to paint on them, but I just haven't had time to finish those, but we'll do those out on the live stream. So make sure you catch us every Tuesday for that. Um, as we live stream and just work on projects that have come off the printers, or we may even pull a printer on there that needs fixing. So you never know what I'm going to do in a live stream. So definitely catch us out there, and there's random live streams just as I'm working. Uh, definitely want to include you guys, conversation, get your questions, and stuff like that. And if you're new to the channel and you're watching this video for the first time and you're just curious about 3D printing, make sure you hit that sub button. Join the crew as we kind of explore all kinds of cool stuff as we take today take the model from the internet and we make it a real thing so that's kind of the one of the fun things we do on here is we're going to go through all the steps settings will be available and all that kind of stuff that worked for me they but keep that in mind they worked for me so hope you guys enjoy that let's hop to the computer and let's get this thing sliced all right guys so i'm on my macbook today i'm doing this a little bit different if you've seen the live stream you're seeing the background behind me that needs to be upgraded but today we're going to talk about three models and i'm going to slice one of them and what's cool about the way i slice these is all three kind of needed to be sliced the exact same way um, to actually get them to work correctly um, star trek models can be very interesting to get working properly um, some of the files out there they're just incomplete and when you go to slice them the slicer is just like that and uh there's a lot of parts missing and stuff like that. Um, one of our one of our viewers from the stream on Tuesday sent me a model that was doing exactly that. But kind of one of the things I want to go through the three models, and if you're really kind of interested, I want to make sure you guys see another concepts. And if you want me to print them, I will gladly do one because I'm really kind of interested in these concept models that were actually kind of variants that were discussed about the Ambassador class, um, just like the Galaxy class had variants, uh, like the Nebula and. The Phoenix class. Um, there were different variants. But first, let's talk about the uh, Ambassador class Dreadnought. Now, like I said, this comes from All Good Things um, Thoughts. This is basically the same as a Galaxy class built up, beefed up, ready for war, which in that time frame, they were getting ready to go with 
go to war with the Klingons. So the Federation needed every good ship it could have, and this guy was definitely refit to be a beast. So um, definitely all credit to Kyle Roberts for making this one. Link will be down in the description for this file, so definitely go check this one out. Then the other one we're going to talk about is just straight up the Ambassador class. Um, as we saw on screen, this model is really good. I'm, unfortunately, the one I made had an error during printing, so I lost some of the saucer section detail. This is a really awesome model to consider. And this one all goes to ND4 SPD 1919 for a really good model. So, uh, again, links will be in the description. Then the concept ship. Now, this is kind of the one I showed. It has The lower body is very different on this one. Um, the warp nacelles are brought down in tighter. Um, the warp arms are a bit longer but more shallow and the deflector dish is completely old school galaxy class kind of looking um, a hybrid between the Enterprise A and the galaxy class uh, deflector dish so definitely a cool one these are the three that I've shown in the video um, I wanted to pull this one out and give some recognition to us this is one that's still in progress by Captain Mojo but he has made basically a lot of the variant kits for the Ambassador class, the Apollo class, the Pegasus class, and made different variations on the themes, Mark 1 and Mark 2s of those files. So it's definitely something kind of cool. If you're wanting, looking for something very different, these are actually some really cool ships to go take a look at. Um, and as you can see, I've been kind of eyeballing that Apollo class uh, a little bit. So, and this kit actually includes the uh, the uh, Ambassador classes themselves, but I will say the saucer sections are a bit lower detail. Um, you don't have all the windows and stuff that you have in the other model that I recommended. So definitely go out there, check them out, download them. Um, these are awesome files to work with. And if you want to get going on a Starship collection that's just before the TNG era, this is a good one to start because you're right between the Excelsior class B and the Miranda class being the bulk ships of the line to some of the first ships of the new generation. But with that said, Let's oop, let's hop into our favorite slicer, Kira. Yay! Uh, okay, so I need to get Finder and let's pull the file in. All right, let's get that loaded up and let's take this full screen here. All right, I'm in preview mode. What am I doing in there? All right, so the ship loads in. Now, when I looked at this. Oh, uh, what printer am I on? I'm on a CR10. And that's, I actually printed this using my CR10 Max for that nice beefy size. Really love that printer. Great detail. The CR10s, great detail. Um, really love those printers. They are very much the bulk of my printing fleet. And when I tried to print this one, my first instinct was to do this. Was to put it on its nose and support it this way. Unfortunately, this did not work. Um, as it went up to the warp nacelles, the warp nacelles just kind of all fell up and scattered apart. I don't know if the model moved or the fact that it was having to hop over to different parts, if it was just clipping or something, but my first attempt, it just bombed out horribly. Um, so what I found for my orientation that worked best was this way starting with the nacelles and then I came back with the plug-in that I very much enjoy of custom supports and I basically made sure everything that needed good support oops such as these little guys right here I wanted to make sure they had good support to build um, these are kind of beefy right now, but I have now when I we missed an important part. Uh, when I first looked at the model, of course I said beef her up because it's the point of printing it if I don't make it big, right? So I actually believe my original I went to 250 percent, but for what we're doing here, 200 is great. Now, looking at the model, there is red. Um, I wanted to make sure I got these warp struts supported. And these are just a little big. I'm going to 
cut these down a little bit to be a little thinner. Um, I made sure the warp struts had some custom supports. I wanted some strength to help hold that up. The warp nacelles, um, this guy is not going to work there, so we'll get rid of him. And just to make sure we had enough support as the ship grew. Let's get rid of that guy and go with the smaller one. And what I like about this custom support plug-in is I can change the base. I can have the base of the support wider. I can have the base and the tip smaller. I can actually adjust all that stuff to help out. So, um, and as the saucer section built, I like to make sure I give it some support and love. Um, I don't want to have what happened to my old model, uh, the original Ambassador class style. I don't want another repeat of that, so um, I always kind of give just some structural support as that goes out, making sure that that doesn't actually click in to anywhere into the model itself, which that one looks okay. Uh, let's get rid of this bigger one. Although that was probably fine, we'll put that back with the smaller one. And awesome, we've got good support. And we'll just go through some settings here real quick. Now I'm only going to slice one because this is how I did all three. So is this exact layout. I used a raft and I actually expanded the raft out to 10 um, instead of the usual 5 just to give that some good extra bed, uh, bed plate adhesion that way it didn't uh, try to pull away from the bed because that's the last thing you want is just to pull away from the bed and get knocked over and then you lose an entire print at 80 percent at the top near the top of the saucer section but if you get there you don't have to throw it away there's nothing wrong with making a blown up starship so um Basically, you'll go through settings, layer heights are all right there, uh, walls, top bottom thickness, infill density. Honestly, when I did this one, I did it too high. I did it like 30%, and the thing is heavy. Um, so in actuality, I'm even going to kick that down to five. Uh, print temperatures. So I use, these are not my standard print temperatures on here. We're going to make some adjustments. Right now it's winter for me, and I've been using Inland, P or actually no, I've been using Tensi uh, PLA Plus. So and I've been heating that at about 215 degrees, and I've since winter's here, I've bumped my bed back up to 60, and I'm getting good adhesion holding on. So there are my print speeds. Um, if you need to, just pause the video. Uh, actually, one thing I do want to check, and we'll go back and check that here in a little bit. We'll actually. Oh, here it is. Here's what we want. Uh, retractions enabled. If you're getting a lot of stringing, especially since winter kind of came on and the cold temperatures came in, check your retraction. I use 6.5. Um, every once in a while I have to bump it or lower it, especially if it gets hotter or colder. Even though I've got a climate-controlled room, it still has some temperature variation and humidity variation that can be in play. But right now, 6.5 to 7 is actually working really well for me to keep stringing from happening to my model. So definitely kind of keep that going. In my retraction, I do a speed of 25. Um, Z-hop. With those warp nacelles, we definitely want Z-hop. And do not check Z-hop over printed parts. We want it to Z-hop over everything. Um, we don't want it to clip on a support. And this, I generally actually bump up to 0.4. Um, just works really well for me. Cooling is pretty much standard. Uh, support. I'll do 80% on this one. I don't really need to go any further with the custom supports, so it will auto-generate in a little bit of support. And then the raft. I've actually got it bumped out to 15 here to just give it a really good hold on the build plate. Um, and then I, I'm not doing anything in experimental, so we'll slice that and we'll actually see what it looks like when it's going to print. Now, like I said, that dreadnought is beautiful. I am itching to paint that one. Um, and I'm right where I'm ready to go to the airbrush phrase and get the good solid flat color on it um, so I can start really building out the other colors and it's going to be a little bit difficult to do with that third nacelle arm in the middle there um, but we'll get it done so um, stick around or make sure you join me on Tuesdays at 8.15 Central Standard Time 
um, when I'm doing a stream, you may see this guy on here being painted and worked on. So, because uh, we're kind of just expanding out a little bit more this year than what we were the prior year. We're doing still some of this stuff, but we're also, let's take the model to the end. And you guys, if you have been joining or just curious, we've been doing some resin prints, um, been painting them up as well while we wait on this to slice. Um, I am still using Cura 4.10. I have not jumped to, uh, I actually 4.13 just dropped. Um, I think a week or two ago. I need to upgrade to that, but I just have not had time. Um, I plan on doing that probably over this upcoming weekend to actually kind of play with the settings and work on them. Because, let's just be honest, we want good, we want Cura to work, and I just, ha I had a ton of trouble with 4.12. I don't know what it was, but I just had a lot of trouble. Um, so I'm kind of really, really antsy to get started um, and look at 4.13 here. Maybe we'll even do it on a stream. Who knows? So we're almost done with the slicing process here. And this can take a little bit, but I, do, I, wanna I want you guys to see the preview, especially what I'm talking about with the raft. Now, I go to 15. Doesn't mean you have to, especially if you're doing this smaller on like an Ender 3 or something like that. 5 may be just perfectly adequate. Um, but you can see how this raft, if you can see my mouse, I know it's kind of small. Uh, it's got that out and away from the model. That is a solid piece. It is helping hold all of our supports. And you can see that some of the auto generate is in there. Like right here in the phaser strip, it generated some support right there to make sure that, that builds up properly. So there will be a lot of extra support. You can see right here it generated some support uh, to help make sure those warp struts are good and strong and you can kind of see there the five percent infill in orange um, I do a pretty thick wall so it builds up kind of nice but you can see that it, the uh, you can't see my finger pointing at it but right here here's the auto, some of the auto generated infill in with our custom supporting to make sure this builds up properly so that's the model that's how it's gonna print and it should be quite glorious once it's done and you guys saw the dreadnought it looks great you're gonna see some finishing shots here in, a, in right after the time lapses which is where we're about to go um, I hope you guys enjoy the time lapses I hope you enjoyed seeing my settings um, and just seeing how to how I go about printing Federation starships in one piece because I've come to find printing Star excuse me Star Trek ships I like I prefer to do them in one big piece versus trying to do them in a bunch of pieces and try to assemble it so especially ships like this doing it one shot wham bam it's done and then it's just some cleaning a little bit of cleanup and i've got my ship model ready to start moving to paint so definitely a cool thing and you can see there we're not using a ton of pla it's 158 grams as the estimate and about a day and a half to print which is pretty awesome so Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you are new here or curious more about Kira and want to know more about Kira, have questions about Kira, make sure you leave the comment down below. And make sure if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Or if you're just enjoying the content and you've been here before and haven't, hit that subscribe button and join the crew. Let's hop over to those time lapses.
Alright guys, that's the models. I personally think they came out really, really well. Now granted there's some size disparities here, but all in all, I mean, just the detail that these models could get. I mean, these are fantastically well detailed models. And I'm really ecstatic at getting to work on this one. I want to get the sky gray onto it and then really start pulling through those details and getting that brightness and beautifulness of the Federation Starship um, onto this model. Cause I mean, even this one, it's even got the Lance phaser. I mean, come on, that's just awesome. This thing is built for war. But when it was the end of the Klingon war and the golden age of the Federation, the ambassador class itself definitely stood out and helped bring in that golden age that we saw in TNG of peace and exploration that we lost in D space nine with the dominion and the dominion war. So, and this was the old Federation where the Borg really kind of changed the name of the game and brought it to where we started seeing warships like the Kula Kira class and stuff like that. If you guys are interested, those videos are out there of time, of time lapses, a lot of those more futuristic warships. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure if you're new here and you liked it, make sure you hit that sub button, join us. And if you have any questions in regard to 3D printing, these models, anything like that, make sure you leave that comment down below. And if you're just here, just say hi. So thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video.